Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday morning. Today, we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna do a normal juicing, new juicing recipe that I haven't shared yet. And then we're going to talk about disordered eating and a little bit about eating disorders, but I wanna save that mostly for the professionals and the specialists that work with that day in and day out and talk about disordered eating and healing at the same time. So as far as our juice, let's talk about what we're gonna make. I'm making, it turns out a lovely green color. It's a pineapple, cucumber, well actually it's a whole cucumber, but I've started cutting it up. And two to three apples, just depending on how much the pineapple yields in juice and some ginger. So as I get chopping, we can get talking. I wanted to touch on um, disordered eating and eating disorders because that is something that's been really prevalent in people that are close to me and clients that I've been working with. So with eating disorders, those can look a lot like disordered eating or it can look really different. So just to touch base on it and clear the air, anorexia, bulimia, if you are struggling or suffering for either from either one of these conditions, Seeking a specialist and a professional for your mental and emotional health is the most important thing. Um, EDKC, and there's a couple other resources that you can Google if you're in the Kansas City area. If not, there are a lot of resources nationwide and a lot of online opportunities too to talk with someone. Face-to-face -face is always, I think, the most comforting, but if that's not an option for you right now or you're feeling like you're still staying in the shadows of what you're struggling with, maybe online would be the best option for you. So physically, with eating disorder, disorders, anorexia, bulimia, what is going on in the body beyond a mental and emotional struggle is you're probably looking at a lot of heavy metals in the body. So once you're getting your mental and emotional health taken care of, it's really imperative that you seek a specialist or professional to, um, or a guide to walk you through a heavy metal detox that is safe and effective for your body. And that is going to help you overcome that, you know, the strong pull or the obsessive behavior to control what you're doing. And it's not your fault and it's not something that you asked for and it's not something that you asked to struggle with. So I encourage you the best you can to try to release that guilt and shame um, from your mind and your body so that you can heal. As far as disordered eating, that is something that I have struggled with and I wanna talk about it today to encourage you and just show you how some of these paradigms that we've bought into and some of these belief systems and these different ways of eating and feeding our body are actually really hurting us. So I'll tell you a little bit about my journey. A lot of you know that I've struggled with chronic illness, autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's for quite a few years. And oh, that piece too thick. And what had happened when I first started coming down with thyroid symptoms, I was buying into a really high protein bodybuilding diet, really low carb. I started to put on weight gain that just out of nowhere I was exercising and still eating pretty well. And all of a sudden I started to get kind of puffy and inflamed and I was like, where did this weight gain come from? It must be something I'm doing wrong. So, you know, my body was craving things like glucose, sugars, and I had such a sweet tooth at the time that yeah, I would I would binge on like ice cream and sweets, that was probably my biggest thing. But I also really craved things like fruits and juices and sweet potatoes and squash and, and healthy sources of glucose. But because of the diets that I was on, I was really limited on carbohydrate and I was told I needed to feed myself a ton of you know proteins and healthy fats. So that was one period in my life where eating was really difficult for me. It was really never fun. It felt like a chore. I never felt like I had freedom in my food. I always had to have it planned out because I started to no longer trust my body. And what was going on in my body is my body was telling me, hey sister, you're not feeding me the things that I need. And I was having these crazy cravings and like uncontrollable binges. When you binge, that is, you are past the point of control. Your body, you cannot overwrite that 
physical signal in your body, that chemical signal that what is going on in your body, it's you cannot willpower through that struggle. A binge is a binge because there is something that is out of balance in your body and something that needs support. So maybe that's something you struggle with or maybe it's an obsessive just, um, disorder with food where your food you cannot eat outside of your plan. It has to be exactly what you're used to eating and it brings you intense fear and anxiety to eat anything other than what's on your plan. And that can be for a lot of reasons. Um, I understand that as dealing with a little trauma from after being sick for so long. And there was a period of time where I felt like my body really knew what it wanted to heal, but I was running the show in my mind and telling my body, you cannot have these things, you cannot have these fruits, you cannot have these forms of glucose. And I would eat super clean and how I thought I was supposed to be eating all during the week. And then on the weekend, I would have like, this is not a joke, a food journal, like a little note section of my phone and I would be planning my next cheat meals that always turned into a binge because once I gave my body a taste of one, the calories and two, the carbohydrates it needed, I just went nuts. And I know a lot of people struggle with this too. And that was all during the season that I was struggling with the hypothyroid symptoms. You know, I was like, okay, well I'm putting on weight. I don't know why I got to cut the carbs. I got to up the exercise. I was exercising really vigorously and not replenishing my body how it needed. And then it turned into, as you know, a couple years went on, and eating became really uncomfortable for me. My digestive disorders were full blown. I was miserable in my gut. I didn't feel good. Anything I was eating either gave me a physical reaction in my digestive tract, or it gave me a chemical reaction like a histamine, an immediate allergy to a food. And I wasn't even eating foods that I was allergic to. I was eating like grass-fed meat with vegetables and you know maybe some lemon juice and olive oil and really not any carbohydrate um, maybe just a little bit in the day but every time I would eat I would get these reactions and so it got to the point where I was like I don't want to eat anymore and I love intermittent fasting and that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about I would eat once a day I would do one to two workouts before I even ate for the day but when I was eating it was like it I mean, I would start sweating because it made me so nervous because I knew what was coming. I knew that I wasn't going to feel well after I ate. And it seemed like anything I put in my body just made me feel tired and sluggish and slowed me down. So eating became uncomfortable and scary, but then there would be some, and I knew once I ate for the day, my day was over, I wasn't gonna feel well. So I would save that for the end of the day, but I was lacking the proper nutrients and calories that my body really needed. Or maybe you don't struggle with the fear of gaining weight or the fear of how you react to foods. For a lot of people that are binging, they're you know, restricting so much during the days that they are compliant or doing, you know, adhering to a rest restrictive eating pattern that when they do allow themselves some freedom, they binge. And it's it's a chemical override in the body. Your your body is literally hijacking your brain and telling yourself you have to eat and you have to get this food right now you cannot willpower your way out of that but then you know some people struggle on the other end of the spectrum and they maybe don't feel like they're good enough in the size that they're in they need to be bigger they need to have more muscle they need to gain weight they just you know some of that could you know actually be true that they don't feel good or don't feel strong or healthy at the thin body weight and they're recovering from maybe a restrictive eating pattern or maybe naturally they're just a really lean thin body type and they could suffer from a little body dysmorphia or they just don't have any self-love and they are telling their bodies you're not good enough how you are i love that people are tracking their calories and watching and making it a conscious choice to eat enough that is amazing but when we're getting to the point where we're having to, you know, set timers on our phone to get food down and then feeling incredibly nauseous because of how much we're eating when, you know, your body's clearly telling you, I don't, I don't want to eat this many calories. I don't want this many protein shakes. I don't want this many, you know, eggs and bacon and chicken and everything. And that's really hard on your digestive system too. 
to be pounding all that protein. So this is a little bit of a side note, but if you are wanting to gain weight, look into glucose and carbohydrates from natural sources as your fuel. It's not the protein and the omegas and all the healthy fats, while they're really important, that are going to get you big and buff and strong, it's the glucose. But you know that is a whole nother end of the spectrum. It can be, whether you're struggling with weight loss or weight gain, it's all in the same. It comes from a point where we're not you know, really loving our bodies and, and we're probably not listening to our bodies. Maybe the struggle with gaining weight is the same thing with losing weight. It stems from inflammation in your body. And when our cells are inflamed, it's like when we go outside and we see it's raining and we put on a raincoat. We're like, okay, well, I don't want the water to get on and into my skin, so I'm gonna wear a raincoat outside. Well, our body works the same way with our cells. Our cells see that there is a foreign pathogen, um, you know, a chemical, a heavy metal, a virus, a bacteria, whatever in our body, and to protect itself, it puts on a raincoat. So that's great, that's our layer of infl inflammation is the raincoat, but the problem is, once we set up that layer of protective inflammation, other things aren't getting into our cells. Glucose, nutrients, hormones, and that's what begins the weight gain, the weight loss. It works in the same way. Some people just manifest it differently. So don't be jealous of your friend that can gain weight really easily, and don't be jealous of the friend who can lose weight really easily because we're all you know, struggling in our own way. So for me, what I realized was it was this dirty little secret that I had. Like socially, it would affect me. You know, we go out to eat and I'd be like, okay, well, I'm gonna order this clean meal and stick to the plan. And then I would get home and it was like, that's not enough. I'm like, drop my friends off, see you later. I, ha I would drive across town to get whatever I was craving. I didn't care what time it was. My body was just like, you need to feed me now. And that came from a really restrictive period of eating in my life that I was depriving myself and not listening to my body. My body was telling me what it needed to heal, what it wanted, and I just didn't trust it. I was like, how? I cannot give you carbohydrates. I cannot give you glucose, or I, you know, I cannot give you that many calories, but I'm still gonna ask you to do CrossFit. I'm still gonna ask you to do all these workouts, and that's not going to work. And honestly, when we look at disordered eating, there's a physical component too. When you are really toxic and you are really inflamed in your body and you have pathogens and you know viruses bacteria heavy metals different things going on in your body that are making you inflamed and toxic the pathogens that eat these foods that you know we're consuming that we crave the refined sugar you know the pizza the donuts the ice cream those pathogens send out chemicals they biohack you and they are sent they are interrupting your own body signals to say hey I'm craving this food hey I want this food so, so you know take it easier on yourself and we beat ourselves up. I used to feel like a failure, be like, I cannot believe I did that again. And just, you know, the self-hate talk, that was, you know, really big. And telling myself, I can't believe I did this, but I didn't have the information to understand what was actually going on in my body. And that would have helped me overcome it a lot easier to understand, okay, my body is toxic, my body is inflamed, my body is craving these foods because of it. it's not my fault. It's not a matter of, am I strong enough or compliant enough? or smart enough to do this, it's just that I didn't have the information. And so that was the physical component. The emotional component was, I didn't love myself enough to want to feel good. I just wanted to look a certain way. I was never good enough. There was some body dysmorphia there. Not understanding that you know my body is made to look good, feel good, and serve others, but also just, first of all, learning to love myself before I could stick to any eating plan and a good, eating plan for you is one that offers loving parameters but with a lot of flexibility because if you would have put me I had done so many restrictive diets and eating plans throughout the years that the next one you put me on was going to set me over the edge of measuring of calculating of you know when coaches would ask me are you sure you're not cheating because I wasn't seeing the results I was looking for but the problem wasn't my compliance to my plans, it was what was going on in my body, the inflammation, the autoimmunity, the pathogenic load. So, and then mentally, I, I thought it was all up to my willpower and my strength to get through this. I thought, you know, it all rested on me and that I was the only one struggling like this. I thought my body was broken and it was just something that I didn't want to talk about. I wanted to avoid. And I think that really led to why my disease progressed to where it did because I didn't want to acknowledge it and 
I didn't want to deal with it. I wanted everyone to think that, you know, I was perfect and that nothing was wrong with me, especially with my health and that I could do it all and I couldn't and I was struggling and then I got really, really sick to where I didn't do anything for months. I just sat on a couch and researched what I learned and am able to serve you with now and then spiritually and that's the last piece that I'll end on. Spiritually, I was so disconnected and I had an overfed body, but an undernourished soul. And I was using food as a coping mechanism or as comfort. And I catch myself still doing this. And it's awesome. It's so empowering once you can start to uncover answers and explore why you're doing the things you're doing. So now I'll notice I'll sit down to work on something for graduate school and it's not going to be that fun and I don't think I'm going to enjoy it. So all of a sudden, oh, I'm really hungry and I'm all about nourishing my body consistently with a good source of glucose and fuel. So, you know, when I'm hungry, I eat, I eat a ton of fruit, I eat a ton of carbs. So I'll get up, grab some dates or some watermelon or a juice or a smoothie out of the fridge. Then I notice as soon as I'm done, I'm like, hmm, as soon as I'm done, am I actually hungry? Because normally that would fill me up. I'm distracting myself and subconsciously my body's like, oh, I don't want to focus on this uncomfortable, something that's going to cause me discomfort, my schoolwork, and not be as pleasurable. So I want to go to something that gives me pleasure and comfort. Food. I love it. It tastes great. I feel amazing eating this way. So that is something that I'm working on, just being mindful of, am I actually hungry or... And maybe I'm nervous. I notice if I have an event that I'm going to, maybe to give a speech or a talk that I'm like, I fixate on, did I eat enough, did I do this, this, and this, but I tune into my body and I'm like, I just had a juice, I'm taking something with me, I'm good. And it's easy, I noticed that, you know, food has been such a big part of my life and it has been the thing that's healed my autoimmunity and my, my body entirely. So it's really, really important and it deserves all the focus, but it's also something that, my mind knows when it doesn't want to be uncomfortable, it can focus on to take me out of that. So it's something to think about if, you know, you're trying to lose weight, how are you looking at food? Is it a, is it a cycle of self-sabotage and self-hate and talking down to yourself? And if you have an eating disorder, reach out to ED, Casey, reach out to professionals and specialists in your area, and then also look into the physical components of the toxicity in your body with you know anorexia or bulimia especially with bulimia it's a cortisol adrenaline driven when you go to vomit that floods your system with adrenaline and that feels good that's like a rush that's like a high and that's not something that you're probably equipped to on your own overcome and understand and then to get that addictive behavior tendency out of the body we have to heal the brain and heal the heavy metals out of your body so if you're severely struggling with an eating disorder, please look into the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual components. I'm a resource to point you in the right direction, but I really urge you to seek a specialist. And if you're working on healing your body, if you're working on bringing in healing foods into your regimen, and you're you know worried about gaining weight or losing weight, something to think about. Are you giving your body the right foods? Our preferred source of fuel is glucose. So are we giving our body the glucose that it needs, you know, to feed our brain cells, to feed our muscle cells, to feed everything and keep away those cravings and binges? Yes, you will, as you start to heal and detox, you will have cravings because as we're killing off the pathogens that we were feeding with the unproductive foods, they're going to biohack and send chemical messengers that make us crave those foods. But also you'll get to a point and I never thought I would say this, but I really don't have cravings anymore. I had, this is kind of funny. I had a food dream a couple weeks ago of like, I think I was eating pizza and I woke up and I thought about it and I was like, I am hungry. I have been going to the gym or doing really extreme workouts and I have not been replenishing with the calories that I need. So I went and got myself a big Chipotle bowl, put it on top of a salad at home. That's not normally something that would make me feel really good, but I know I needed the calories and it did its job and it did feel good to eat that way. And then the next day I felt really good back on eating, you know, a lot of fruits and glucose and raw foods. So it's about balance. And if you are trying to gain weight, are you pushing yourself over the edge? Are you, you know, is eating such a stressful thing in your body that when you sit down, you just have a response. You have to have something to distract you like the TV 
or your phone or it's not pleasurable, you know, you'll notice you might be tapping your foot or looking around or finding eating is really uncomfortable because it's, you know, you're, when you sit down and eat, you're telling your body, you're not good enough how you are. You have to take this in and this is going to be a, a struggle or a painful process. So look into feeding. If you're trying to gain weight, glucose, 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 and good glucose. So your fruits, your sweet potatoes, your squash, all of the living foods, that's what your body needs. And then of course, exercise and using that muscle will help you grow as well. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have a topic that you want to be discussed on next week's Jen and Juice on Tuesday mornings, send me a message, um, drop it in the comments below, let me know what you'd like to hear. And then if you liked this topic, I'm going to be releasing a blog post later in the week about disordered eating and healing your body. So stay tuned and there will be more.